Students, this is the first class of antineoplastic agents. Already we have known the classification of antineoplastic agents. They are classified as alkylating agents, anti-metabolites, antibiotics, plant products, enzymes, hormones and monoclonal antibodies. Now we will see one by one. First one is alkylating agents. The alkylating agents are classified into nitrogen musters, nitrosoureas, aziridins, alkyl sulfonates and methyl hydrazines. Example for nitrogen musters, mechlorethamine, melphalon, chlorambucil, cyclophosphamide, ephosphamide. Examples for nitrosoureas, lomustin, carmustin and c-mustin. Aziridins otherwise called as ethylenemines. Examples are thiotepa and benzotepa. Fourth one is alkyl sulfonates, only one example that is busulfan. And the last one is methyl hydrazines, examples are procarbazine and decarbazine. Now we will see the mechanism of action of alkylating agents. These alkylating agents are bifunctional, they form carbonium ion intermediates and they are acting as strong electro electrophiles. So, they react with the nucleophilic moieties of target molecules to form strong covalent bond. The examples for nucleophilic moieties are 7th nitrogen atom of guanine, 6th oxygen atom of guanine, 1st and 3rd nitrogen of adenine and 3rd nitrogen of cytosine and to a lesser extent phosphate atom of DNA. These alkylating agents are most effective in G1 or S phase. Then it leads to miscoding, depurination and the cleavage of imidazole ring. What is miscoding? The guanine present in DNA exists as a keto form that is a keto tautomer and it pairs with cytosine. Usually ATGC adenine pairs with the thiamine, guanine pairs with cytosine. But if it is alkylated, the guanine prefers the keto tautomer and is more likely to pair with thiamine, not with the cytosine. So, this leads to alteration in amino acid sequence of protein and that leads to disruption of protein structure and function. This is called as miscoding. Next one is depurination of DNA. This alkylating agent may also link with two adenine groups. So, what is the usual pair ATGC? But here, these two guanines, two guanines can link on the same chain. Such an attachment would mask that portions of DNA and block access to the necessary enzymes required for DNA function. This is called as depurination. And third one is cleavage of imidazole ring. Then it leads to the cleavage of imidazole ring in guanine which destroys the guanine. So what is the mechanism of alkylating agents? First that forms a carbonium ion intermediate. Then it becomes strong electrophiles. Then that one reacts with the nucleophilic moieties of target molecules to form a covalent bond. So, what are the examples for nucleophilic moieties of target molecules? 7th nitrogen atom of guanine or 1st and 3rd nitrogen atom of adenine or 3rd nitrogen atom of cytosine and 6th oxygen atom of guanine. Okay. So, this would be an example for alkylating agent. So, here what is the first step? It forms carbonium ion intermediate. So, how it forms carbonium ion? One Cl is removed from that. So, it forms a three membered heterocyclic ring with one heteroatom. So, this is called as aciridinium ion. Aciridins. What is meant by aciridin? Three membered heterocyclic ring having nitrogen as the heteroatom that can be called as aciridin. So, because of the positive charge, it can be called aciridinium ion. So, it forms carbonium ion intermediate. So, it acts as a strong electrophiles, electrophiles. So, this one combines with the nucleophilic moieties of target molecules. Here, what is that one? 7th nitrogen atom of guanine. First example is 7th nitrogen atom of guanine. So, this positive charge has to connect with the 7th nitrogen atom of guanine. That is why we are getting this one. Okay. Then again, this one combines with that. So, here one more, one more um, guanine would be attached with that, attached with the carbon to form a guanine cross link. So, from that it leads to three processes. What are the three processes? First one is miscoding, depurination and the cleavage of imidazole ring. So, that would be the mechanism of alkylating agent. So, once again I will repeat that. So, what is the main mechanism? First one 
this alkylating agents are bifunctional so they forms carbonium ion intermediate and they are acting as strong electrophiles then they react with the nucleophilic moieties of target molecules to form a strong covalent bond so from that it leads to three processes what are they one is miscoding depurination and the cleavage of imidazole ring so what are the examples for nucleophilic moieties of target molecules first one is seventh nitrogen atom of guanine first and third nitrogen atom of adenine and third nitrogen atom of cytosine and sixth oxygen atom of guanine now we'll see nitrogen mustards they alkylate the seventh nitrogen atom of guanine in dna and leads to miscoding depurination of dna causing breaking of dna strands and last one is cleavage of imidazole ring and this destroying the guanine the first drug is called mechlorethamine so this is the structure of mechlorethamine so what is it ch3n with the n ch2 ch2 cl here ch2 ch2 cl so here the parent is called diethyl this is ethyl here one ethyl here one ethyl diethyl amine so this is the parent chosen here so with the ethyl this is first carbon this is second carbon second carbon is having chlorine so this this ethyl also having chlorine that's why it is called 2,2 dichloro with the N what is attached to methyl so N methyl diethyl amine so that is the chemical name of mechlorethamine so from the name itself we can say ME ME for methyl chlor for chlorine ethamine means ethyl amine so what are the other names for mechlorethamine mustardin mustin or nitrogen mustard so what is the use of mechlorethamine in the treatment of Hodgkin's disease and other lymphomas usually it is given in combination with vincristin procarbazine and prednisone so next drug is called cyclopasmamide so what is the structure of cyclopasmamide six member heterocyclic ring having oxygen phosphorus and nitrogen so with the phosphorus it is having one oxygen that is connected to that by means of day tube bond and here n ch2 ch2 cl twice with one molecule of water so this is a structure of cyclophosphamide so what is the parent chosen here so this heterocyclic ring having oxygen phosphorus and nitrogen so that would be considered as the parent here so what is the name of the heterocyclic ring already we have known what is the priority order o s n so here oxygen is getting higher priority so number 1 2 3 4 5 6 so the numbering would be like that okay so starting from oxygen as one so oxygen and nitrogen means that is called oxazo oxazo and because of the phosphorus it is called oxazo phosphorin we said it is oxazo no oxa aza so oxygen at one aza at third so one three two phosphorus in second portion so oxazo phosphorin so one uh 3 2 oxazo phosphorin and second phosphorus no second one is having oxide so two oxide only one molecule of water so monohydrate okay so uh, tell me the substituents we have to tell the substituents no with the second only this should be attached so two open bracket we are having two molecules of ch2 ch2 cl so that's why base two molecules that's why base this is first carbon this is second carbon so 2 chloro ethyl amino tetrahedro tetrahedro 2h here 1h so 2h um 1 1 3 2 oxazo phosphorin 2 oxide monohydrate so that is the chemical name of cyclophosphamide now we'll see the synthesis of cyclophosphamide so what is the starting material here we have taken diethanol amine ethanol we have known ch3 ch2 oh that is called ethanol so two molecules of ethanol so diethanol amine would be taken and that on chlorination by means of thionyl chloride at 35 degree centigrade what happens instead of hydroxy group here we have a chlorine so again that one on treatment with pocl3 so what you are in the presence of pyridine we are getting this one so what is that so what is attached here by replacing one hydrogen uh, hydrogen as hcl by taking cl from here so we have what is left here p 
POCl2 is left here. So, that would be attached with the nitrogen and we are getting that. Now, with that we are adding 3 amino propanol. So, 3 amino propanol we have added and that one on cyclization directly we are getting cyclophosphamide. So, while comparing with other alkylating agents, it is active orally and parenterally. So, that is the main advantage of cyclophosphamide and it is a pro drug. So, it requires metabolic activation by means of cytochrome P450. Now, we will see the mechanism of action of cyclophosphamide. So, already we have known the structure for cyclophosphamide. So, what is it? So, it is a no, 6 membered heterocyclic ring having oxygen, phosphorus and nitrogen with the phosphorus oxygen would be added and here N, CH2, CH2, Cl twice would be added. So, it is a pro drug. So, it requires metabolic activation by means of cytochrome P450. So, on that activation what happens? We are getting 4 hydroxy cyclophosphamide. So, this is first position 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is the fourth position. So, fourth position hydroxy group is added. That is why it is called 4 hydroxy cyclophosphamide. Then it is further converted into carbinolamine intermediate. So, how we are getting carbinolamine intermediate? Here there may be a cleavage, a cleavage between carbon and nitrogen. Here there may be a cleavage. Here we have a enol form now. So, that would be converted to keto form. And here because of the breakage, here one more hydrogen would be added. So, we are getting carbinolamine intermediate. Then this one undergoes non-enzymatic fragmentation to form acrolein. So, this is called as acrolein, acrolein and phosphoramide mustard. So, what are the products we are getting from carbinolamine intermediate? One is called acrolein, another one is called phosphoramine sorry phosphoramide mustard. This phosphoramide mustard combines with the 7th nitrogen atom of guanine to form a covalent bond and that leads to 3 process, usual 3 process, processes. They are miscoding, depurination and the cleavage of imidazole ring. So, what is the use of cyclophosphamide that is used in the treatment of multiple myeloma, chronic lymphocytic leukemia and acute leukemia of children. Next drug is called as melphalon. So, what is the structure of melphalon? Phenyl ring here 1 and we have N, CH2, CH2, Cl twice and this in here we have CH2, CH, NH2, COOH. So, that is the structure of melphalon. So, already we have known CH3, CH, NH2, COOH that is called alanine. So, with that phenyl is attached to means that is called phenyl alanine. So, this is called L-phenyl alanine. So, here this would be first portion. So, this would be Fourth, with the fourth portion we have nitrogen and that is having two molecules of um, uh, two chloroethyl. That is why four open bracket bis because of the two groups bis two chloroethyl amino close bracket L phenyl alanine. So that is the chemical name of melphalon. Already we have known it is the derivative of phenyl alanine that is used in the treatment of multiple myeloma breast testicular and ovarian carcinoma.